first of all, let's speak to Andy Street now, Conservative Mayor of the West Midlands, former boss of John Lewis, of course. Andy, lovely to see you this morning. Thank you very much for joining me. Can we get started on the post office? Because you have got a unique perspective on this, having been the head of a uh, major company and at the same time a politician now and obviously mayor of West Midlands. Now, you got a CBE, I remember, uh, some time ago for your yeah. uh, service to business and other matters. Some people are looking at Paula Vanell's and she's given the CBB, CBE back and they're saying to themselves, should CEOs actually get CBEs already very well rewarded? Obviously, there's been a scandal in her case. Um, do you think that she was rewarded effectively for failure? And is it right at all that people who are very well remunerated get these honours in the first place? Yeah. So good morning, Camilla. Lovely to be here. It's a lot in that question. But you're right. It's interesting to view the post office scandal through the lens of having led John Lewis for 10 years. And yes, uh, uh, I think you, you do understand in that CEO role the whole point about trust. And there's mm. clearly been an incredible breach of trust here. And uh, people must be held to account for that. But to come to the CBE question and the honours system, uh, my personal view is that honours are incredibly good for people who do normal jobs and then do something extraordinary for society and actually get rewarded. I was with a chap who runs a series of community centres in Birmingham just this week and he'd just been to Westminster, to, to Windsor, to get his award and he felt so made up. So let's not trash the system no. overall. But to your point about people doing their well-paid senior job and just doing their job, I don't believe that they should equally be rewarded for that because frankly they're remunerated for it appropriately uh, so that's the difference I think. So did yeah. you feel that you got your honour for doing more than just your job? I, well it was very clear because I actually chaired the local enterprise partnership for Birmingham and Solihull and in the citation that's what was called out mm. actually it wasn't but, just for doing the John Lewis job. So in contrast Venels was given this um, award for services to the post office. It looks that way and whether you be frankly a perm secretary of a department a CEO of a company if you are paid really well for doing an important job not taking anything away mm. from that I don't believe that you need an honour as well. Are you remunerated that covers it. Yeah. Yeah. There's been talk um, about her perhaps losing the um, golden handshake that she received. She got £3 million when she left. Do you think that's too complicated to start clawing back money? Or do you actually think maybe that is an approach that the government should take? Well, I think there's a danger of prejudging here. You know, we've mm. got... I, it's very clear that she did not exercise control of her organisation, that's right, because you, you must, as CEO, you must know what's going on yes. in your organisation. I'm pretty sure that if we'd had, when I was in John Lewis, if we'd had 58 successful appeals against us in a court of law, I would have known about it as the boss. So I assume they knew about it, so you have to assume they didn't choose to act upon it. But we would be wrong to prejudge that and take cash away. There needs to be proper inquiry as to what's gone on here. And then, of course, action must follow. But let's not prejudge. And what's your business minded sort of intuition on uh, Fujitsu? Because, again, there's been the suggestion that they knew that there were bugs in this system and on it went. And then, of course, they went on to be rewarded billions in further government contracts. Yeah. So it's really the same answer as the post office. Part of leadership in business is you, you know you're in a really responsible position. People are relying on you. That notion of trust, we're obsessed with that in John mm -hmm. Lewis. And if a CEO of an IT supplier, you know it is doing wrong, you have a moral responsibility to turn around and do something about it. So exactly the same. But I do, again, I'm quite careful not to sort of slam all business. You know, it'd be very easy, just as in 08, to say business is bad. I'm also a huge believer that good business is an incredible force for good in the country. And we've just got to be careful about that judgment in this. Let's talk about Birmingham then. What on earth has gone on with Birmingham Council now declared bankrupt? The Labour run council is saying that people's council tax bills will have to go up by, I think, 10% to compensate. What's happened? So it's 10% this year, it's 10% next year. So they've announced 20% cumulatively. And you know, whatever's happened with the politics, you have to think, first of all, about hard pressed council taxpayers across the city. I was on doorsteps in Northfield only yesterday morning, and this this is hurting people on the ground. So let's remember that. But what's happened? It's really very straightforward. It's that they have both on underlying budget and also some one-off issues. We've got this equal pay claim that has come since 2017, three quarters of a billion pounds. It's an enormous amount of money in equal pay claims that they face. So they simply cannot 
balance their budget, hence the declaring effective bankruptcy. And then, of course, they have to get back into financial uh, security. And that's why council tax is going up directly as a result of this. I mean, presumably you support the um, idea of women being paid equally to men, but this has been mismanaged, has it? Of course. I mean, every organisation in the country, not just local authorities, that's sort of enshrined, isn't it? So that, and the, the, the sort of depressing thing about Birmingham, we could use the word the scandalous thing, actually, is that there was an equal pay claim before that was settled in 2014, effectively settled by the then leader of the council, swiftly, and then a new claim has come since 2017. Mm. And it's utterly depressing that, you know, the same thing has happened twice and citizens in Birmingham are left paying okay. the bill. I mean, obviously, the council would push back on what you're saying and say that actually it hasn't mismanaged funds and it's doing its best by its constituents, so to speak. But let's talk about something different involving your role in Birmingham and the idea that you have had huge success with how Housing and meeting yes, housing targets. Yes. Now, tell us, Andy, how have you managed to do this? Because the Conservative government has been criticised for not building enough houses. That's been a criticism also made, by the way, of the previous coalition and indeed Labour administrations. But what are you doing yeah. right that you can tell Rishi Sunak to yeah. do in order to build more housing? So, first thing, it's not just about me and it's not just about Birmingham. This is a West Midlands region number, actually. And the reason you asked the question, just so viewers understand this, is we are the only region in the country which is achieving its housing target. How? How, yeah. So three things I'd call out. First of all, all our local authorities working together in this sort of technical duty to cooperate, to have a target number and then have a plan to actually achieve them. Very pro-growth policies with uh, developers who come forward, so our councils naturally are inclined to support them. And then critically, our role is to find funding, public funding, to close the viability gap in private schemes that wouldn't otherwise be viable, particularly in brownfield remediation. So the thing that I'm so pleased about is we're achieving our numbers, an average of about 16,000 homes per year in the last six years, whilst protecting all of our green belts. So we're bringing old industrial disused place back into use for housing. And it's all those things together that give us that great position. Do you think there's too much nimbyism, not in my backyardism, in the Tory party? Because this is a huge electoral issue, isn't it? There are people now who are saying we need more housing. They might have previously been opposed, but now they're looking at their children and their grandchildren, yeah. even their great-grandchildren. They can't afford to live nearby. So housing is the key. You'll have uh, people like Simon Clark singing from this hymn sheet. Yet at the same time, there are other Tories like Theresa Villiers and others who, who seem to want to block housing. Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's really important to my party and it's and its offer to people coming up. I'm very much in the Simon Clark view of this, that actually we have to find a way that we build those homes, including affordable homes. I'm very pleased that our percentage of affordable is going up. And one thing I would definitely not have done is remove the uh, target of, uh, that we have for each area, because that definitely has driven this collaborative behaviour across the West Midlands. So I want that target, and I want actually my party to demonstrate that it can deliver on the ground. Just one thing, though, because the journalists make this very easy for the Labour Party. If you actually look at what has been produced in the last year, centrally across the whole country, it's nearly double what was done in the last year of the last Labour government. So let's just not take too many lessons on that. Andy, I don't like to make life easy for either Tory or <laughs> Labour politicians, I can assure you. Um, can we talk about HS2 briefly? Um, you did threaten to resign if that Birmingham to Manchester leg was scrapped. It was scrapped. Why didn't you resign? So let's be very clear about this. People suggested I should resign. I never threatened the Prime but Minister. You weren't happy but I, did, about I wasn't it happy. I wasn't happy and no beating about the bush. I did uh, consider it. Why didn't I resign? Because there are many other issues to fight for particularly, you know, the party's bigger than one simple thing. But probably important to just tell you what's gone on since. So since the Prime Minister actually he made his speech and he said in that speech, I will welcome proposals from Andy Street for improved connectivity between Birmingham and Manchester, as he said. And the good news is, working with Andy Burnham, we have now commissioned the private sector to come up with those proposals. And government is really very welcoming of, the, of that work at the moment. So we have not given up the idea of much improved connectivity okay. between the West Midlands and Greater Very Manchester. Very briefly, Andy, I mean, HS2 is a project now we've read in the week that actually mm. the trains are going to be slower and not be able to
to take as many people as they thought. They're not going to come all the way into Euston. That, this whole rail project's a disaster. That, that last bit about Euston isn't right, actually. Well, the work I mean, is, is still. It's not going to be happening in Euston for another seven years. That's correct. But, I mean, what's the point of it? Uh, it is going to go to Euston and it's going to go all enough. the way to the. It isn't opening to Birmingham until uh, uh, about seven years' come time, on, actually. This is a bit of a uh, white elephant, this no, project, that's not isn't true. it? That's cost millions and billions and actually isn't delivering on its original pledge. So let's be clear. Uh, it is overspent. The execution of HS2 has not been good. I am not here to defend HS2 Limited and the fact they are significantly over budget. But the principle of a new connectivity between London, Birmingham and the North, that has to be held on to. And it will open within about seven years. Two Curzon Street gives us an incredible opportunity. You're a patient man, Andy Street. Seven years' <laughs> time. All right, fair enough. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Lovely to see Thank you. Thank you.